Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and in this video I want to answer the following two questions. What is the NGSS and why is it important? The NGSS, or the Next Generation Science Standards, are simply a set of goals, but they'll lay the groundwork for K-12 science education for the next 20 years. Now, quick uh, disclaimer, the NGSS were created by a bunch of smart people with the help of Achieve. That's not me. Um, this video and all subsequent videos are going to be based on my experience. Over the last five years, I've been working with schools and teachers as they implement the NGSS. That's hundreds of teachers who impact thousands of students. There's not a day that's gone by that I haven't been working on the NGSS. And as I dig into it, I find these standards to be incredibly valuable. They have inquiry built in, they have engineering built in, they build wonder in the classroom. As I've taught lessons and seen other teachers teach lessons, it really can transform what's going on in science education. But the first time I meet teachers who are dealing with the NGSS, a lot of the time they're simply confused. And that's what this video is for. First time you look at the standards, you might just be inundated by the documentation. Let's say you're a third grade teacher and these are all your standards. You get names that you're not familiar with, flow charts, appendices, and these three different dimensions, connections to the common core. A lot of the time you just can't see the forest for the trees. So I want to help. Uh, first thing I've done is I've gone through and color-coded all the standards and given them names. You can find that on my website called The Wonder of Science. But let's look at some grade one standards or uh, performance expectations is what they're called. In lower elementary, you'll have about 10. And that number is going to grow as we go to middle school. and high school, you're going to have around 20 of these in the course of a year. But if we look at just one standard, we're going to break that apart. First thing you'll see is going to be the orange. The orange is called the disciplinary core idea. That's just the content. It's the science content that they're going to learn. In this case, it's going to be that objects in darkness can be seen only when illuminated. What does that mean? Well, up here, there's an apple, but you can't see the apple until I turn the light on and it's illuminated. That's the word that we want first graders to start using. What's going on? The light is bouncing off from the, from the light off the apple to your eye so you can see it, but also light is coming from the light itself. And so that's illuminated as well. Now, if that's the old standards, we would have ended there. You would have taught students this, maybe given them an experience, but that's the end. But this is only a third of the standards. Let's move on to the blue. The blue is gonna tell you what the kids will do. These are the science and engineering practices. Practices. In this case, they're going to be making observations essentially to construct an argument. So they have to be presented with a phenomena, something they haven't seen before. Let's say it's uh, shadow puppets, and they have to explain what's going on, what's causing that shadow. Um, and they have to understand what's going on from a physical science perspective to kind of make that argument. Now, they might do okay with a claim and tell you some of the observations that they're making, but their reasoning will be poor because they don't have a framework to really understand what's going on. That's why we have the third dimension, these cross-cutting concepts. This is how we think about science. And the one that they've chosen for this standard is cause and effect. So if they use a graphic uh, organizer of cause and effect, in this case, the cause is going to be the light. If light hits a object or comes from a light bulb, then it's going to be illuminated. But if we eliminate that light, then we have darkness. And so this is what a three-dimensional standard really is. It's telling us not only what is the science that their students are going to learn, it also tells us how the students should learn through this process called inquiry, and then how the students should be thinking. These are the three dimensions. They're embedded in the standard, and they should be in every learning experience that the students have. Every assessment they take, it should be three-dimensional in nature. Let's dig a little bit more into each of those dimensions. What are the students going to be learning? Well, they're going to be learning big core ideas in the life science, this would be those four ideas. In the physical sciences, a lot of the time chemistry teachers will look at this for the first time and they'll say, well, there's hardly any chemistry. Um, you don't understand that there's also energy um, that's been added as far as chemistry. And we also want to make connections to the natural world, like human impacts on the natural world. And then finally, engineering is added. And so these are the big core ideas that they're going to hit four times in lower elementary, upper elementary, middle, and high school. What are we going to do then? What are we going to do in the classroom? We're going to do the science and engineering practices. So this is inquiry. It's how we ask questions and build knowledge by answering those questions, building models, and then changing and constructing those models over time. These would be the science practices, and these would be the engineering practices, where we identify human problems and then come up with model solutions to those problems. So this is what we're going to do. And then how are we going to think? These are the cross-cutting concepts, and there's seven of those. 
This is how we make sense of scientific phenomena. Now these are cross-cutting. It doesn't matter what science you're teaching, these will make sense. And if you're teaching social studies, these are overarching themes, patterns, cause and effect. We're gonna see them in the world around us. And so this is how we organize our thinking. And so as they were framing these standards, they would look at a topic that we're trying to teach. So let's look at matter and structure of matter. So how do we know that the world is made of these particles? Well, the best way to understand what's going on is for us to do some investigations where we heat up those particles, uh, we look at vapor pressure, melt, melting point, we look at surface tension, and that tells us a little bit more of what's going on at the particle level as we look for patterns. And so they identified this performance expectation or this standard. It tells us what are the kids going to do, what are they going to learn, and how are they going to be thinking. Now, this has shaped the work that I do in school. So I was asked by a school to do a lesson that addresses this standard. First thing I had to do is understand what the standard was, I then to come up with an assessment that gets at it. But then I had to come up with some kind of a phenomena. So I'm going to build the lesson on that. I didn't want to just say, we're going to learn today about intermolecular forces. I wanted to kind of couch that in a phenomena. And so this is the phenomena I came up with. You could try this at home if you want to. It's a glazed plate. You just write on it with a dry erase marker, pour a little bit of water on it, and the letters will start to float. Now, the reason why is based on the content that's found within this standard itself. But I didn't tell the students that. I wanted them to start by doing some inquiry, asking questions, developing models, and then they started to investigate to figure out what's going on. They're really in the, in the role of a scientist. Now, some of the students struggled with that because they didn't have a really good understanding of intermolecular forces. They didn't hit that standard of atomic composition model that they would get in middle school or this particle model in fifth grade or just understanding what objects and pieces are. And so you can see that this is a vertical curriculum. It's really hard for students to just jump right in because they they don't have all of that vertical underpinning below it. Now, this is the journey that schools take once they adopt the NGSS. The first thing we have to do is we have to spend a lot of time on this three-dimensional learning. How is it a paradigm shift and different from the way that we've been teaching science in the past before we ever figure out what our course is going to look like? If we don't do that, we're simply aligning. We'll take the standards and just fit them into what we've always done in the past, and it won't change our science classrooms at all. Next step is to come up with good assessments. These are going to be performance assessments where the students are doing things before before we ever get to curriculum instruction. If we don't have good assessments, we're just going to get lost. And trust me, I've looked at so many materials out there and the assessments are all pretty horrible at this part. And so we're going to have to build better assessments to figure out where we're going. Now, if you're a science teacher in America, like this is your future. About 20 states have adopted the NGSS and other 20 have standards like I'm from Montana that are based on the framework. And so this is going to be the future, but there's so many schools outside of America that are starting to use these practices, starting to use these cross-cutting concepts, and we're all in it together. I was just at the NSTA, the National Science Teachers Conference, and it was just packed with teachers who wanted to understand how to unlock the power of the NGSS, and I'm here to help. It's a huge privilege that I get to work with all these schools, and so I'm trying to give that back. Uh, I have a website called The Wonder of Science. Everything's free. It's Creative Commons, so feel free to take anything that I make and use that however you want. I'm going to make all these videos. My wife is helping me out. Um, but we're here to help. Uh, why is this important? Well, in America, there are 2 million science teachers. For me, like, I think 1.6 million of those are elementary teachers. Like, this is a new passion in my life. I want to bring science and my love of science to kids all around the world. And so I hope this video is a good point, and I hope that was helpful.